Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Beloved, I welcome you into today's service in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord richly bless you this wonderful morning. Yes. Holy Spirit, come in the dimension of Christ Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, and supervise the word of God into our hearing. Give us understanding of your word. Come and give us the ability to stand firm in the eternal faith of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come into the word of God and let the word of God be alive in us. Come into the word of God and give us understanding. Come into the word of God and let the word transform our, our, our behaviors, our characters in the name of Jesus. Come into the word of God and bring your signs and wonders. Come into the word of God and let there be deliverance and healing. Holy Spirit, come into the word of God and let there be supernatural encounter today. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you into today's service. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Beloved, we want to enter into the throne room of God. We want to give reverence to God. Oh God, you are awesome. I like what uh, the Bible says in Exodus 15, 11. Among the gods who is like unto thee, who is like unto thee, working wonders, majestic in holiness. Hallelujah. So all that we'll be saying is, Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you in your majestic holiness. Why? Because among the created gods, among the seraphims, the cherubims, the thrones, the powers, principalities, authorities, dominions, archangels, angels, there is none like unto you who have created them. Hallelujah. So worship the Lord this hour. Worship him. Let it come from within you. You have seen his creation and therefore you wonder at his creation. Worship the Lord your maker in Jesus name. Le katara brose ke mehele be kita randa ki ndere broki andara basanda. E me huza zaki andara basanda. He is a zaki anda. My Lord, my God. In the name of Jesus, we lift you up above all. In the land of the living, all creatures are created to die. But you alone live eternally. And by your grace, you have considered to give us eternal life in Christ Jesus. We have seen this in scriptures. It is open to our revelational mind. We have accepted it. That is why we say, glory, 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 hallelujah unto your holy name. My Lord, my God, we agree with the seraphim spirit of adoration and we say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts and the earth is full of his glory. My Lord, my God, you are that God who is majestically enthroned above all seraphims. Because of your bigness, you cannot occupy the heaven. That's why you live outside the heavens. My Lord, my God, we thank you. We'll bless your holy name. We'll lift you up, O oh Lord, on behalf of all creation, on behalf of every human be we say we'll lift you up on behalf of everyone who does not believe in Jesus Christ we say receive honor we take honor from them and we surrender it unto you in the mighty name of Jesus we magnify your holy presence oh Lord we agree with the seraphims the cherubims and all the all the assemblies of the heavens and we say thou art holy we install ourselves with every crown and pride and we say hallelujah unto your holy name the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We have come before your majestic throne and we say hallelujah. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy of our lives. You are worthy of everything that is here because you created them for your praise and glory and that is why on behalf of all your creation we say take glory. Glory, 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 hallelujah to the kings of kings. Glory, glory, hallelujah to the Lord of lords. In the name of Jesus, you are majestically enthroned. You said in your word you are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning beginning and the end. The first self-existed one. My Lord, my God, in the beginning you said you are the word. Everyone whom you have called has first heard a word. Come Abraham out of your father's house. They have heard a word. Therefore, in the beginning you were the word. In the beginning you are that word. The word is God and the word became incarnate in the flesh which you call Jesus Christ. Receive praise and honor for what you have done in the land of the living. Together with the unity and born in the spirit of Christ, we say Praise the name of the living God. Be thou exalted this day and take glory. Glory, glory belong to you for what you do today. 
Lord, we say we thank you. We bless you and we exalt you above all creation. In Jesus' victorious mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters and all my audience on all the platforms, the Lord richly bless you wonderfully this morning. Continue in to hear the word about eternal life. Hallelujah. It is my sincere uh, privilege to be with you here. And I believe that God will speak to you. You will encounter God in his word this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Lord richly bless you. Please, today's topic is very, very special. The word of God is special all the time. It brings revelation to our soul. And that is why you must stay to receive what God has prepared for you. Give you understanding in his word. Hallelujah. So I know that you'll be blessed, more than blessed today in Jesus' name. Amen. So do not also forget to share this broadcast. Kindly share this broadcast. It is mandatory by us to share the word of God. So share it and let us share it together and receive the crown of reward together in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the living God. Amen. Now, the general theme is, Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. In fact, it is our consciousness to the eternal spirit that is with us, in us, on us, and working through us. So, eternal Holy Spirit, it is, He is everywhere at the same time. But because of the shelters of this, uh, of this life, works up and down, family, business, tiredness, and because of all those things, we are not conscious of him. Whether are we conscious of his speaking? So, when you intentionally say, welcome Holy Spirit, you are tuning in your frequencies, your emotions, your thought to the eternal Holy Spirit. Thereby, you receive him into yourself again. When he comes, he quickens you, he revives your soul, and nourishes you with his beauty and loving kindness. When the Holy Spirit comes, he regenerates your soul to receive the word of eternal life, even as it is coming today. Therefore, welcome Holy Spirit is to welcome the Holy Spirit into your life, making you alive to the word of God and to the word of eternal life. The Lord will bless you this hour in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now, the topic for today, the topic for today is nothing impure will enter into the book of life. Non nothing impure will will enter into the book of life. Hallelujah. So in other words, nothing impure will enter into heaven or will enter into the new earth. So that is a different translation. Amen. Nothing impure will enter into the book of life. So this topic calls for the necessity to be saved. The topic calls for the necessity to be saved. Because if nothing impure will enter into the book of life, the book of eternal life, if nothing impure will enter into the book of eternal life, then there is a necessity to be saved from impure, impurity, unholiness, unrighteousness. There is a necessity. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Please, let's turn our Bibles to... Revelation 21, verse 27. If you read only the 27, you will not understand all the things, all the stories. So it is better to take it from the beginning. Amen? Uh -huh. If time is on our side, we will do it exactly that. Hallelujah. Revelation 21, please. All right. Now, I would like to read from the verse 1. Please read together with me so that you know what I'm reading is not from me, but it's in the scriptures. Hallelujah. 
It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, or for the old, or pains. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cold from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, verse 8, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual immorals, those who, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all, and all liars, they will, be cons they will be consigned to the fairy lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to move to the verse 27 because it is long. You take your time and read so that you understand what we are talking about. Verse 27, you see, Nothing impure will enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Only those whose name are written in the Lamb's book of life. Only those whose name are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen? Nothing impure will ever enter it. Nothing impure will ever enter into the new heaven and the new earth. Nothing impure will enter into glory, into heaven. When you die, you are going to heaven as a transit. When Christ comes, he comes to renew the earth. Every pollution, what he has not planted on the earth, he will take it away. Made the earth a new earth and the atmospheric heaven, everything will be new. Hallelujah. And then, nothing impure will ever enter into it. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. In the Lamb's book of life. Hmm. This is very awesome. That there is a book of life. There is a book of eternal life. The planet Earth, the Earth we are living now, is like a stage. God is watching from heaven. The word of God says that the eye of the Lord walked through and fro, looking for whom to looking for the righteous to favor. Hallelujah. So God is in heaven. And he's writing the names of those who are just. He's writing the name of those who are righteous. But the question is, who are righteous on the earth? Can you tell me one person on earth who is righteous, who is holy, according to the standard of God, holiness and righteousness? Because holiness and righteousness is solely defined by God. It is God who defines what is right and what is holy. So, among the living... Who are the righteous and who are the holier one, the holy ones? Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Now, it says, Nothing impure will enter into the book of life. Amen. So when the practices of heaven comes on earth, there will not be death. Now, when the new earth, the new atmosphere heaven comes, what, that time, the practices in heaven, the holy heavens, the spiritual realm of heaven, 
where holy angels live. When the new earth and the new new atmosphere heaven has been uh, put in place, yeah, the practices of heaven will come on earth. And when it comes on earth, there is not going to be death or mourning because it will cry when people die. So we will not cry because people will not die again. No more crying. We cry because of pains. But now there's not going to be pain. Therefore, there's no crying. Hallelujah. And then for the old order of things, the old order of immoral practices, the old order of pains, the old order of sin practices, all these things will pass away. Why? God is making everything new. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So right now, I am asking myself when I read the scriptures, what is impure? What does God call impure? Now in the verse 8, Revelation 21, 8, it says, But the cowardly, who are the cowardly? The cowardly are those who refuse to declare Jesus Christ as Lord. They are, they are ashamed of the name of the living God who has come in the flesh. They are coward people. They cannot proclaim Jesus as Lord. And therefore, their faith is questionable. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I wonder if they have, if they have uh, already accepted Christ in the first place. And therefore, the cowardly, the impure are the cowardly who reject or who uh, are ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. Two, unbelieving unbelieving blessed are those who have not seen but have believed according to the intuitions and the impartation of the holy spirit amen and then the impure are the vile what is vile vile are nasty nasty practices those who practice things that are horrible we call it vile the madras the sexual immorals sexual immoral practices there's a defined uh, sexual practices by God and there are undefined, immoral, abnormal practices. Amen? Uh -huh. Those who practice magic arts, the idol worshippers or idolaters and all liars, they will be as consigned to the ferry of lake of fire. This is the second death. Amen? So, Right now, I have mentioned some things that is stated in Revelation 21 verse 8. I have mentioned them. So, right now, in my mind, I was searching within my heart and within the internet, the medias, to see who does not fall under what is written here. You understand? Uh -huh. I'm searching myself and I'm searching the internet according to what I am watching on the television and the other medias, who does not fall under what is stated here? And in my conclusion, that is my conclusion, not the scriptures. In my conclusion, yeah, every one of us has fallen short of the righteous moral standard of God in one way or the other. Maybe you are not a murderer, but you are a liar. Maybe you are not an adulterer, but you are a thief. Maybe you are not a, a, prost, a prostitute, yeah, but you covet, or you practice nasty things, or you practice sexual immoralities. You understand? So, I consider the word of God pure and holy. So, right now, what is the solution? What is the solution? If nothing impure will enter into heaven will enter into the book of life then i then i see that every one of us every human being is impure before god's righteous and holy standard everyone so what is the solution hallelujah aha uh -huh. so right now first of all i want to find out from the the five book of moses yeah, the first five book of Moses. Whether there's anything mentioned about the book of life, the book of life. So I found out in Exodus 32, verse 32 to 33. Please let us read. Exodus 32, verse 32 to 33. Oh, please, can you share this broadcast for me? Please, 
share the broadcast and let people come to hear the word of life, the word of eternal life. Hallelujah. Exodus 32. All right, verse 32. Are you there? All right. Okay. Let me take from verse 31. He said, So Moses went back to the Lord. The word Lord there meaning Yahweh or Jehovah in the Latin, Yahweh in the Hebrew. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold. But now, please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. Blot me out of the book you have written. The, the Lord replied to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will not, uh, who, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. So God will not blot, will not cut out people's name from the book of life. Not everyone, but those who have transgressed against his righteous laws. So right now, here it is written that there is a book of life. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. God has a book that he writes people who acknowledge him, people who uh, worship him, and he write their name in the book of life. Amen. So, Moses said, if you will not forgive them, then blot out my name from the book of life. Cut off my name from the book of life you have written. So, in the presence of God, there is a book of remembrance. People Angels who takes record are writing the names of everyone according to God's predestination. Amen. He writes their name in the book of life. Amen. So, he said, the people of Israel has done what is impure. They created image for themselves. So, Revelation 21 verse 8 is right. When he said that, Nothing impure, including the adol ad, uh, adolaters, including idol worshippers. So what is written in the Exodus 32-32, it is true because they have practiced on adultery. And that is why Moses says, do not, if you will not forgive them of this sin, then cut my name off. Erase my name off the book of life. Amen. In fact, in this statement, I saw a great leadership skill. A great leader in Moses. Because he is not concerned about himself. Moses, his name is written. God has revealed it to him. He has saw it that there is a book of life. But he is not content. He is not selfish. But he cared for the people as a leader. He said that God... You know, God will wipe all these people who practice idolatry. He will wipe them from the book of life. But Moses is so concerned. He said, God, if you will not forgive them, Yahweh, if you will not forgive these people, then my own, this sin, erase my name from the book of life. So I saw a great leader in Moses that he's not concerned about himself. My only me, only me, only me. But he's concerned about the people. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Amen. So right now, let us also turn to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And let the scripture speak to us that there is a book of life. Hallelujah. A book where, a book of eternal life where people's names are written. The record is kept for a particular day. Hallelujah. Daniel 12, please. Then Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Please let us read together. You see, at that, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There 
will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations unto them. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, which is the book of life, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. That is everlasting condemnation. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So, in this book also, Daniel 12, 1 and 2, the Lord Yahweh will save everyone whose name is written in the book of life. But everyone's name who is not written in the book of life will be sentenced to everlasting condemnation. So right now, there were people who believed in Yahweh, who believed in God Almighty. They died and they slept in the grave. In fact, the reason why the Bible describes this is because death in God, death does not exist in God. Death, therefore, those who believed in God, when they die, we say they sleep. Until the appointed time that Yahweh, who became Jesus Christ, who resurrected from the dead, will, what? will wake them up just like his own resurrection. Praise the name of the living God. So right now, there is... The names of people, there are names of people written in the books of life. They have died. But a time is coming when the great uh, prince of God, Archangel Michael, will fight the battle of the people of God. At that, during that time, during that time, there is going to be resurrection of the dead. The righteous will rise. The unrighteous also will wake up from their, from their grave. Because the righteous in God, the children of God, their name were written in the book of life, they will be hot, they will resurrect and come back to life in righteousness. But those who refuse God, the cowardly who refuse to receive Jesus Christ and to proclaim him as Lord, the wrongdoers, evildoers, they will be what? Consigned to what? Eternal death. Now, Revelation 21 verse 8. The cowardly, the unbelieving, the nasty and horrible things people done, the murderers, the sexual immorals, those who practice magic art, the idolaters, and all liars will be consigned to the lake of fire. Now, Exodus 32 verse 32. The people worship idols, so they were consigned to the lake of fire. That is what it means. Moses saw it. Daniel saw it. So right now, when I compare and contrast the two uh, verses, Exodus and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Revelation and Exodus, those who practice evil, their name will be wiped from those who will live eternally. Not that they will not live eternally, they will live eternally in the lake of fire, but eternally in glory. There is living in glory and living eternally in condemnation. This we don't want. That is why God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he became a son unto humanity that whosoever believe in his atonement for sin will not perish but have eternal life in glory. Because whoever believes will not perish. So there are people who will not believe, they will perish. And those who believe, they will not perish but they will have eternal life in glory. So people are dead like we have seen in Daniel. They will be risen to life, but they will be consigned to eternal damnation in the lake of fire. We are not like that. Hallelujah. In Christ, it's not like that. That is why this revelation, eye-opening uh, uh, teachings and preaching, it is for your hearing, for your soul to consider which path to take and to make a good decision and receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Hallelujah. So, looking, looking at things, we have all sins, one way or the other. So, so, what is the point? What can we do? Now that I have made a research of everyone, that we are all in one category according to uh, Romans 3. 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For every human being have, have fall short of the glory of God because of wrongdoing. Everyone. So if that is the case, then it means we are all impure. And nothing impure will enter into the book of life. Nothing impure will enter into heaven, will enter into the new atmospheric heaven and the new earth when it is renewed or created new. So what is the point? What can we do? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Hmm. Amen. So Moses said, Lord Yahweh, please forgive their sins. He said, if you will not forgive them, then cut off my name from the book of life. Because if Yahweh will not forgive you, then it means their sins is against them. And when they, whatever they sin, that is impurity. And impurity will not enter into the book of life. Moses saw this clearly. So what is the solution for the impure to become pure in order to enter into the book of life? The book of eternal life. So this is the wisdom of God. Moses said, Please forgive their sins. Forgive their sin. Hallelujah. Now, please, let's turn to 1 John 1 verse 8 and 9. Hallelujah. 1 John 1 verse 8. Please listen. It says, uh, 1 John 1 verse 8. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, please listen. It says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. Now, this one is particularly speaking to Christians, believers. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the... We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So after you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you think that you have not seen you are a liar. And the truth is not in you. Amen? But not verse 9. If we confess our sins, but if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive, all, forgive us all our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. This is amazing. Beloved in Christ. My fellow audience. This is amazing. He says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. And purify us from all unrighteousness. Purify. So if Impure, nothing impure will enter into the book of life, will enter into heaven. Then, now, you need purification in order to enter into the book of life and to enter into what? Eternal glory or to enter into the new earth when created new. Hallelujah. And this can only be done by purifying you from every wrong thing you have ever done. When you ask for forgiveness of sins, Moses says, a good leader, Lord, petition, Yahweh, Yahweh, forgive these people. If not, my own self, erase my name in the book of life. And one thing is that God cannot, God cannot punish the righteous and the wicked together. Otherwise, he himself is unjust. He's not righteous. And Moses at that time, Considered by God righteous, though he murdered someone in Egypt. Uh -huh. But that one will not tackle that one now. But at that time, God considered Moses to be doing the right thing because he did the right thing. Amen. So if God should cut off his name from the book of life, that is unrighteousness. 
So God will not do that, but God has found a way to forgive the people. And God says that those who have done wrong, they will be punished. But now, there is one aspect of God Almighty, one aspect of Yahweh, who, which was unknown before, but revealed in time when he put on flesh. That is called the zeal of the Lord, the lovely kindness of the Lord, the mercy of God. We call the grace of the eternal Father in the flesh, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Because of his grace, he has come to purify you so that your name will be written in the book of eternal life. Your name will be written among those two people who, in, who will inherit the new heaven and the new atmospheric earth. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. But how? But how are we forgiven? Is he only just like that? Oh God, forgive me, therefore you are forgiven. Are you saying this prayer in your high moral graded mindset? Oh, in fact, you see, let me just say this because this one is common to everyone. When you are healthy, you have money, you have food, you can have fun. You don't care about anything. But when sickness strikes you and you lie, you, you lay on your bed and you are thinking, and then sometimes you think that, oh, I may die from this sickness. You begin to see God, isn't it? Uh -huh. You begin to see God, say, oh, God, forgive me my sins, so uh, let me not die with this sickness. The moment you are healthy again, you forget about God. The things you say, God, forgive me, you go back to do them. Is it not the truth, my brothers and sisters? Let us be frank with ourselves. And that is the truth. So right now, right now, how can we be forgiven? If we, when we say forgive us, we are lying because of the situation. So how can we be forgiven, brothers and sisters in the Lord? Now please turn your Bibles to John 1 verse 29. John 1 verse 29. Hallelujah. And then, I read John 1 verse 29. He said, The next day when John saw Jesus coming towards him, towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, how are we forgiven? We are forgiven by God who became a lamb through Jesus Christ to take away the sin of the world. And therefore, there is a prescribed way that God Almighty takes away the sin of the people. So taking away the, taking away the sin of the people is purifying the people from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Because all righteousness, wrongdoers, liars, adulterers, fornicators, murderers, thieves, liars will not enter. That is impure. You will not enter into the book of eternal life. Your name will not be written. So how will God solve this problem? To solve this problem, God became himself the atonement, the sacrifice to take away your sin. That is the prescribed way he has laid down for every soul under heaven. Hallelujah. Now, John 3, verse 21 to 26. Please let us read. And did I say John? Romans, sorry. Romans. Romans 3. Romans 3, verse 21 to 26. It says, But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets, prophets testify. So, the prophets and the law testify about a righteousness that is coming, which is by faith. The law and the prophets testify about this. The verse 22. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. 
to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentiles, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his, in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus Christ. So now, the eternal father has not left any equation out. Those who died before the coming of Jesus Christ, those who died before the prophets who died and every human being who lived in that uh, ages died without God and those who died with the hope that God will save them also, he combined all of us even to today and he, he justified us by faith. Hallelujah. So that he who is just God is the same God who justifies all who believe in the work of salvation through Jesus Christ. The work of salvation, redemption, that God himself became the man Jesus Christ was crucified by the shedding of his blood, your sins are forgiven you to be received by faith. Praise the name of the living God. So that the same God who is just will justify you by believing that God has come to the flesh, to the Virgin Mary. He came to work for, for, in fact, I am very special about the word for. He came to work for the salvation of humanity on the earth. And we are working out our salvation with fear and trembling. That's the difference. Salvation has to work for. But now because we have salvation, there is an obligation to do what is right in the land of the living. That's why you look with your left eyes, you say it's not good, then you turn right. Hallelujah. That is working out. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Now, Romans chapter 5 verse 1. It says, Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The verse 9. Since we have been justified by his blood through faith, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? And therefore, if you are a sinner, your sins are not forgiving you. The wrath of God is upon you because you are impure and you have been consigned to what? Eternal fire. But now if you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then the wrath of God is taken, is taken away because God the eternal father justifies you through the blood of Jesus Christ because you have faith in him. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So right now, right now, what is the conclusion of the matter? What is the conclusion of the matter? Amen. Let us read 1 Timothy 1 verse 15. 1 Timothy 1 verse 15. Hallelujah. Hello. Uh, let's take it from, from the verse 12. It says that, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service, even though I was once a blasphemer, 
and a persecutor and a violent man. I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Verse 15. There here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst of them of whom I am the chief sinner. So, in conclusion of this matter, in conclusion of this word of God, Christ came into this world. Christ came into this world to save sinners. That is the conclusion of the matter. The impure. Jesus Christ to save the impure. Who will not enter into the eternal glory? He came to save people who will not get the chance in themselves to enter into the new glorious earth that will be recreated. People will not have the chance when they die to enter into heaven because they are impure. You can't take impurity into heaven. You'll be thrown out. It's not accepted. Sin is not accepted in heaven. Sin is not accepted in the new earth and the new atmospheric heaven. Sin is not accepted. And that is why the truth of the matter is Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. Which Apostle Paul says that he is the chief sinner. So I also accept this to myself. I am a chief sinner. You accept that to yourself. You are a chief sinner. And that is the reason why Christ has come to save you from your sin. Sin is impurity. Praise the name of the living God. Nothing impure will enter into the book of eternal life. Nothing impure will enter into heaven or will enter into the new earth again. Nothing impure. So Jesus Christ, to save a remnant... To save souls that are ready to be saved. Are you that person, my brothers and sisters? Beloved in Christ. Audience, are you that person? Jesus Christ want to save from impurity. Want to save from the lake of fire. Are you that person? God cannot impose eternal life and glory on us. Because we are a living soul with a living will to choose. Are you that person who want to be saved from condemnation? Or you want to say you are righteous and you are holy. Your own conscience will forbid you to do that. Your own conscience because there is a spark of truth in your soul. No matter how sinful you are. There is a spark of what? Of light, of truth in your soul that will tell you that you are a sinner. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Are you that person who will be saved this afternoon? It does not take money. Oh. Please forget money and material wealth. There are valuable things that money cannot buy. That is eternal life and salvation of Jesus Christ. Money can't buy. If money can buy eternal life, the rich people will buy all of them and store them in storehouses and people will die. Because you will not have the money to buy it. But eternal life is a free gift from God through Jesus Christ because in himself, he says that as the Father in himself give life to the dead, so he has ordained the Son of God, God who became a son unto mine, he has ordained him to have power and authority to give eternal life to whom he pleased to give. So, the conclusion of the matter is that 
we are all sinners. And now, Jesus Christ has come in this world to save sinners. Let me make this example for you. Uh, in the Jude, Jude said, snatch some of them out of fire. Snatch some of them out of fire. So I'm having these images in my mind. Someone is falling into fire. Every sinner is on the way to hell fire. That is what we are. So we are all on the, uh, on the way to hell fire. You no. Know? And then someone stretches his hand. And that hand is Jesus Christ. He said, hold my hands. Let me snatch you out of the fire. And you look at Jesus and you say, ah, this guy said, he has quite beer. What is wrong with him? You know? And you say, oh, you can do it. You can climb it yourself and save yourself. You fall into the fire because the fire is already burning you. Sin is already consuming you to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. So you can't save yourself. But if you should hold the hands of Jesus, you will be snatched out of hellfire. Hallelujah. You are snatched out of hellfire. So right now, I am asking you, upon all that we have heard, Nothing impure will enter into the eternal book of life. Nothing impure will enter into heaven or will enter into the new earth. Take Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Apostle Paul could not tone it better. He could not tone it better. Here is a trustworthy saying, a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, whom I am a war sinner. So you have to look at yourself and say, in fact, what the scripture is saying is the truth. You have still before, you have lied before, you have committed adultery with your eyes and with your mind. You have done so many things with yourself. Be truthful to yourself. And then you say, you need a savior. And Jesus Christ is that father who has spotted the prodigal son far away. Jesus Christ is that uh, everlasting father who has spotted you far away. The moment you have considered in your heart, in your mind, and you have made the effort to receive Jesus Christ, oh, he embraced you with love and kindness. That's why the psalmist says that, praise the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. And forget not all his benefit. Who forgives you your sins, your transgressions, and redeem your life from the pit, from condemnation, from hellfire, and crown you with love and compassion. That is what it's about. Impure will not enter into the eternal book of life. So right now, he wants to embrace you. And then the, 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 the story says that the father said, bring a rope, bring a rope of righteousness, a garment of righteousness, put it on him. Bring a ring of sonship and restoration of authority and power into the kingdom. Put it on him. Put on him a son of righteousness and holiness to walk according to the standard in the kingdom. So when you come to Jesus Christ, he embraces you with love and kindness and crown you with the beauty of heaven in the land of the living. To live now according to the standard of the kingdom. Call sin, sin. Call good, good. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Now, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2 to bring this message to a conclusion. Ephesians 2. And I read, it says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich 
in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved and and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself, it is the, it is the gift of God. N not by words, so that no one can boast. Now the verse 10 is very, 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 very special for the redeemed. For the redeemed. The verse 10 is very, very important. Because one way of the one side of the coin is salvation by grace through faith. The other side is you have to do the work of salvation, the obligation. Amen. Verse 10. For we are God's handwork. That is the initial handwork of God. Because the handwork of God works righteousness. He does what is good. For we are God's handwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which is prepared in advance for us to do. For those who will inherit salvation, for those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, in the book of eternal life, they, they, God prepared them in advance to do good works. So, beloved believers, audience, when you are saved by great true faith, yeah, you, the next thing is that your obligation is to call sin that is sin, is to call good is good, and then to do what is good in the land of the living. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Nothing impure will enter into the eternal book of life. And nothing impure will enter into heaven or will enter into the new earth. But there is a hope. There is salvation from impure. And this salvation is to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Are you ready this afternoon to receive Jesus, Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Are you ready? It doesn't take money. It takes your will. And one thing I used to ask, what do I lose when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior? Because it's just a, it's a firm. You say it. What are you losing? You will not lose anything other than impurity. Because he will give you his purity, his righteousness, his holiness, his power, his authority. And urge you to walk in the way, the narrow way, which is beautiful. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior this afternoon? Then believe me, your name, your name is written in the last book of life. Now, if you want, read Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Malachi chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. There is a book of remembrance written before God for those who reverent him. There is a book of remembrance written before God for those who reverent him. If you reverend Jesus, accepting him as Lord, your name is written in the last book of life. Because the cowardly, those who reject Jesus, those who cannot confidently say Jesus is Lord, is Savior, they are impure and they will not inherit eternal salvation. But those who receive Jesus, those who reverend him, a book of remembrance, is there because in that day all books will be open. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. So, my audience, if you have not received Jesus Christ yet, this is the time to receive Jesus. So, I'm going to lead you to receive Jesus Christ into your heart. Uh huh. You you allow it. Jesus Christ is a spirit. Uh huh. Jesus Christ is a spirit. Is the eternal Holy Spirit. Matthew 1 verse 18 to 20. That which will be born 
or who should be conceived is the Holy Spirit. And therefore, Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. So if you allow yourself, as you breathe in, you breathe out. You breathe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, into your heart. And you breathe out before one day you, the Spirit enters you, you breathe out in purity out of your system. Hallelujah. So are you ready to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? This is so sweet. Oh. It is so sweet. It is so marvelous to receive Jesus Christ. If I don't tell you, then I'm mistaking something. Because I can compare and contrast my former life in the world. The enjoyment defined by the world. And the enjoyment by the Holy Ghost. I can con compare and contrast and make a good choice for Jesus Christ. Are you ready to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior? Can you raise your hands? Let me pray with you. And you will say this after me. I will mention my name and you will mention your name. And then you repeat after me. Say, I, Daniel Quartz. Mention your name. Do receive Jesus Christ into my heart. As Lord and Savior. Who saves me from my sin. From my transgressions. Jesus Christ. Today, as I breathe in, let me breathe your Holy Spirit. And let me breathe out impurity. In the name of Jesus. Today, before the congregations of heaven, my name is written in the eternal book of life. And when the earth is renewed, I will come in the glory of Jesus Christ. Because the resurrection of Christ is my portion. My inheritance is Yahweh who has become in flesh as the person of Jesus Christ. Therefore, save me now and save me eternally in jesus mighty name amen if you have said this simple prayer as led by the holy spirit go and see heaven jesus says there's rejoicing in heaven before, uh, by the holy angels before the presence of god when one person repents or one person is saved and therefore, heaven is rejoicing because today you have made your commitment to Jesus, your loyalty, and you have pledged to surrender your life and your ways to him. The Lord richly bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved all over the world, let us right now pray that whoever has received Jesus into their heart this day, the Lord himself will nourish them, will guide their steps into all righteousness. So with one heart, one spirit, let us commit uh, our brothers now who has received the Lord Jesus into their heart. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, I give you praise. It is because you have ordained this day to save someone. That is why you brought this message. Therefore, I pray, all those who have raised their hands, including believers who have rededicated their life to walk absolute, absolutely with you, O oh Lord, I pray thee that may you guide them, guide their steps, O oh Lord, wherever the enemy has set traps and has put in deceptive things, O oh Lord, to deceive them into the world again, I pray thee, open their minds to see. Open their understanding to understand the deceptions of the devil. And Lord, my God, I pray that your spirit take them out of trouble. Your spirit take them out of trouble and place them on the path of righteousness. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you assign to these people special angels, war angels, to protect them from untimely death, accidents, and mistakes in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you for every one of us. I bless you because 
this is trustworthy matter which needed to be accepted. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And therefore, my Lord, my God, everyone who do desire to be saved, may you by your grace save them as you have saved us in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we bless your holy name for an answer prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, if you can put yourself in people's shoes, people's shoes who are in war zone, you will realize that it is not easy. Even those who escaped before the war got escalated, you see how they were stranded at train stations, bus stops, no food, no water, no clothing, rejected, embarrassed. How much more those who are still living in war zones? If you put yourself, if you imagine yourself, you find it very barbaric, very distressful, and uncalled for. And that is why we are praying with the compassionate heart of Jesus Christ. That the Lord himself will send his peace to those nations. The Lord himself will console the victims and the wounded and the afflicted and the rejected. The Lord himself will, will manifest flesh by his holy angels and speak salvation to the heart of all those who are victims of war. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, we bring the nations that are at war before you. Jesus Christ, you are the prince of the world. If the nations will rely solely on you, my Lord, my God, you will carry them upon your shoulders and grant them peace. And therefore, my Lord, my God, as we intervene for the individuals who are victims of wars, I pray thee, O Lord, comfort them. Those who are distressed, depressed, embarrassed, rejected, I pray, O oh Lord, that may you comfort them. May you comfort them. May you comfort them in the name of Jesus. I pray those who are wounded and the wounds, there's no medication for them. I pray for supernatural healing for their wounds in the name of Jesus. Spiritually feed them. Let their bodies respond to treatment in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you made a way out that they can escape the countries of wars in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you will help them in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, I pray for those who needed to hear the gospel of eternal salvation, I pray that when nobody is there, may your holy angels manifest flesh and speak the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. Because any other gospel apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ is a lie from the kingdom of darkness. Therefore, I pray if any angels who manifest flesh, may they proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection from the dead and to eternal glory. My Lord, my God, I pray thee, let it be so as you have ordained in Jesus' mighty name. My Lord, my God, we bring the head of states. We bring the head of states, departmentals, everyone who plays a major role in ruling this world. We bring them before you, O oh Lord. May you speak to their heart, O oh Lord. May you speak to their heart, O oh Lord. Even if, if they are agents of the devil, my Lord, my God, your word overrules every other name. Your word overrules every other tongue. Your word overrules every other decision. Therefore, by your executive declaration, I pray thee, O oh Lord, speak your word of righteousness and holiness into the heart of every government in the name of Jesus. So that they will make a beautiful laws upholding your righteous moral standards. In the name of Jesus, I pray thee. May your peace erupt in the heart of every ruling government. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We we'll bless your holy name. Beloved, let us pray for the coming elections in all the world. People are electing presidents, not knowing what they will come to do, which law they will come to pass, whether they are going to violate the righteous laws of Yahweh, we don't know. But one thing is sure, if God allow it, then it is he who has allowed it. But he also said we should intercede. Therefore, we are praying right now that in all the elections of presidents that will stand for this office, that God himself will choose them. 
Let only who God have chosen stand. Every manipulation and corruptions to bring people into power whom God has not chosen, we pray that God's declaration will stand. In the name of Jesus, let us pray for the nations that are electing their president, that God himself will give them a clear mind, a clear picture of whom they should vote for. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray and we bring all the elections into this world. We go to vote, but we understand by scripture that it is you who is taught kings and queens. That is why I pray to you, O Lord. May you, O Lord, rule through them in the name of Jesus. May you open the eyes of the citizens of the nations to choose their kings and queens wisely according to your word. Everyone who uphold your word. As righteous laws, moral laws, my Lord, my God, may they come into power to uphold your laws in Jesus' name. Everyone who violate your righteous moral laws, my Lord, my God, take them out of office in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we bless your holy name because you are king over all kings. Therefore, take glory in Jesus' mighty name. We pray with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, if God, who is lovely, who wants to take us out of impurity and grant us eternal life in glory with Christ, the same God is able to provide for you. Because some of the situation needs immediate attention. And it is only God who can use other human beings to bless others. It is God that will speak to the heart and mind of people to bless others, to help them in business, to become good partners. So we are praying right now. May the Lord grant us our good heart desires. May the, may the Lord prosper our businesses, our projects, our trades, and give us profitable business ideas so that we can invest money into them and make profit to help one another. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, we bring our lives before you, including everything we touch. Therefore, we pray for your blessings, your blessing with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, and the strength to apply the other information into actions. Therefore, we pray, O oh Lord, bless our businesses, bless our trade, bless our trade, bless our partnership, bless our project, and everything we touch it, may it be blessed in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, you are the one who possesses knowledge and wisdom beyond measure. Therefore, when we sleep, when we meditate, my Lord, my God, input in us, O oh Lord, a profitable business ideas in Jesus' name. We thank you and we bless your holy name for an answer prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, we are praying for all singers. God says, not man, not human beings. God says, it is not good for man to be alone. So he created him a partner, a friend called Eve. So as a, a man needs a woman by his side. A woman needs a man by his side. So we are praying, if you are that person who is now saying, okay, I am of age, I want to get married to a man, I want to get married to a woman, yeah, then we are praying that the Lord himself will lead you, will guide you to find the right man, to find the right woman. In the name of Jesus, let us pray for all singers who want to get married to the right man, to the right woman, in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, it is you that has constituted marriage because you know that it is good and it is beautiful. Therefore, we pray for everyone who want to get married. That marriage is as beautiful as it is also man's working. Therefore, we pray for the right man, for the right woman, the right woman, for the right man. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, may you accompany them with knowledge of marriage. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray the Father, you will connect them. If the right man and the right woman, they are not in one geographical area, my Lord, my God, let the universe turn around, let circumstances turn around, and connect them so that they will find one another. I pray thee, O oh Lord, if they come together, open the eyes of the men to identify the glory and the beauty of a woman in that particular lady. In the name of Jesus, I pray the Father, you also bless the man with the glory of a man having the ability, the ways and investments and the capital to take care of a home, to take care of a wife and to take care of the family. I pray for the prosperity of all their trades and businesses in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you and I bless your holy name for an answer prayer. Amen. Beloved, we are also praying for all students in the Lord, all students all students and our children, that the Lord will bless them with outstanding knowledge. Uh -huh. If people are inventing things, new things in the world, let it be uh, let it be our children, let it be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, because they can use that to do what is good. Hallelujah. So let us pray for all children and youths. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, we bring the youth before you, O Lord, because the old people will pass away. They are forgotten about it, but they will pass away and the new, the young people will mount out the, the leadership. Therefore, we pray the Father, imprint in them your righteous Lord, my Lord, my God. I pray thee, according to Jeremiah 33, imprint your word, your righteous laws in their heart. Let no man tell them this is wrong because they will know it because you yourself has imprinted them, inscripted them with your righteous finger in their heart. Therefore, my Lord, my God, uphold your integrity, righteousness, holiness, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, surpassing everyone in them so that they'll grow up to be grow, they grow up to be great leaders of this world, leading the world in the knowledge of God, fellowship with God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, O oh Lord, that whatever trap the enemy has put in place, may your holy war angel clear it from their path. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we bless your holy name for an answer prayer. Amen. Beloved, we are also praying for ourselves. God's protection. I enjoy God's protection because I, I, he is the rock, my back rock, backbone. Uh, the back, without the backbone, this body will not hold. So God will rest upon God as our backbone. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And he is before us as a shield, as a consuming fire. Hallelujah. It means also he releases his holy war and just to go ahead of us. Wherever there are traps, graves, nets, entanglement of the devil, the holy war angels of God clear them out of our path. Sometimes you don't see them. Other times, the Lord reveal it to you when it happens. Hallelujah. So we are praying right now for God's protection over our lives and our family's life, our brothers and sisters, and all our audience, that the Lord himself will release his holy war angels to protect them from all evil, from all accident, and untimely death in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, we give you praise, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, I pray in the name of Jesus, release your holy war angels concerning our lives, our ups and downs. Every day of our lives, all the time, oh Lord, may your holy war angels protect us and our families, friends, and loved ones, and all our audience from mistakes, untimely death, accident, in Jesus' mighty name. My Lord, my God, we depend solely upon you for absolute protection. Therefore, our trust is in the Lord God Almighty. Yahweh, in the name of Jesus, I am that I am, the sufficient one, the first self existent one. You are our protection, our shield, spiritually and physically. Nothing can harm us because we rely solely upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord wish you, bless you, beloved, in Christ as we bring today's service to an end. It is my sincere prayer that the Holy Spirit will speak to your mind, especially concerning the, the, the concerning uh, eternal life. Concerning eternal life. The souls live forever. The soul is live forever. 
but is either in forever in condemnation or forever in glory. Forever in condemnation or forever in glory. The souls live forever. The choice is you. So choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you spend eternity in glory, not in condemnation. The Lord should bless you and have a fruitful and wonderful Sunday. Amen. Please, let's raise our hands and receive the benediction. May the Lord of hosts, the first self-existed one, that as I saw his glory and say, he's holy, holy, holy. May this God, who is unique among all other gods, may he bless you from your head to your toe. May he bless you from your head to your toe. May he bless your heart, bless your soul, bless your spirit, bless your mind, bless your hands, bless your businesses, bless your trade, bless your project, bless your water, bless your food, bless the air that you breathe. In the name of Jesus, bless your footsteps and lead and guide you into success and glory in the name of Jesus. May God Almighty beautify you, glorify you, wherever you are. And may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be upon you and your household now and forevermore. In Jesus' victorious name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the living God. My brothers and sisters and all my audience, you are awesome. On Facebook, you are awesome. On TikTok, you are awesome. On Zoom, you are awesome. And I pray from the bottom of my heart that God bless you with your good heart desires in Jesus' mighty name. So I say shalom to everyone in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes, uh, please, if you have any prayer request, uh, you may send it to us and our team, we will work on it. We will pray for you, for your breakthrough, for your deliverance, for your healing, because that is what God has ordained us to intercede for people's breakthrough. So if you have any prayer request, uh, you may let us know and by the grace of God, we will work.